So, here is the thing. I... Oh, let me turn around. The view behind me is way better. Yeah, that's much nicer. Anyway, I know that the stakes are really high with high prey drive dogs. They can get lost. Your dog can get hurt. Or worse. They can get in with livestock and land you in trouble with the police. Not to mention put their own lives at risk. They can, some of them, may get you into trouble with neighbours if they view smaller pets as prey. And the stakes are very high, I completely understand that. And so, what we often do, now there are really two ways of looking at how do we deal with the fact. If you've got a dog like mine who's got very high prey drive, how do you deal with that, given how high the stakes are? I think there's really two ways of looking at it. So the first way, I would say, is what I see most commonly. And that view is that this is a behaviour problem and we need to find a way to stop it. Either by making it impossible to do, using fences, muzzles, leads, making it entirely impossible for the dog to perform the behaviour, or suppressing it using training, so making it so unpleasant for the dog to do or training them on alternatives so that they just won't do it any more, using training in some way, shape or form to suppress the behaviour so that the dog doesn't do it anymore. So that's one way of looking at it. The second way of looking at it and my preference is to, instead of making it something that needs to stop, make it something that needs to involve you. So for the dogs, for the dogs with a high prey drive, it's often what they live to do. I'm watching my spaniel scampering around enjoying the scent as I'm talking to you. And um, it's often what they were born to do, it's what they live to do for a lot of these dogs. So suppressing it, can have really negative impacts on their welfare and can lead to other behaviour problems like reactivity, resource guarding, all manner, general anxiety. There are, there are all manner of psychological issues with stopping any individual doing something that they love to do. So, the second way of looking at it is my preference. My preference is not to stop my dog from having a prey drive because that's not possible, I can't take it out of her. It is to find ways to involve me so that I am part of the picture as well as the exciting environment and all the scents and all of the prey that we might come across. That it, The second way, I will not pretend, it's not an easy road to go down, it's really not. But often the, the less easy road is the more interesting road. So I would really, really encourage you to have a think about the second road. And if you look down below at the text, I've added, I have got lots of links. I am more than happy to help you out with wherever you are with your dog's pre-drive. I am more than happy to help you out because for me it is one of the most important things that we can work on with our dogs. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.